I love this scripture. You guys got the uh, outline, hopefully. Uh, I think it said, uh, is your name, is your picture on the devil's post office wall? That's a question to ask yourself this morning. The big question. Are you a threat to the darkness? To the enemy? Does he shrink, does he shrink when he knows you're walking down the street? Does he know that you're powerful for God? Does he know that you're a kingdom warrior? That's a question to ask ourselves this morning as we serve our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's look at this scripture. It's a funny scripture. I think it's the funniest script, uh, scriptures in all of God's Word. Chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. I'm telling you, my eyesight is dead. I was reading four years ago, I got my glasses. Okay, here we are. Verse 11. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. So also, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who were around driving, went around driving out evil spirits, tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish uh, chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the home, out of the house naked and bleeding. Now we see when this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear in the name of the Lord. Jesus was held in high honor. Father, we just pray as we study your word this morning that you would help us to understand the power that is available to those who believe. It's like the working of your righteous right hand. We thank you for that. Lord, I pray you just would speak and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, just been a, a really good week. Hope you all had a great week this week. I had the privilege of preaching at a wedding up in North Jersey. Um, it's a different culture. I was in, in uh, what town was that, Patty? Madison. Madison, New Jersey. So really uppity type of people, and I got to preach the word. It was, it was good at, at a wedding, and I really felt God's presence in that, in that whole room. I really felt that God was touching hearts uh, just through a wedding summer. It was really kind of one of the powerful things that I've experienced, but uh, God is good. Then I was thinking about, this reminded me of the wedding, too, I, and I've been looking for this illustration for a long time, and uh, it's a bit funny, but I'm back get serious, all right? Adam was hanging around the Garden of Eden feeling very lonely. So God asked him, what's wrong with you? Adam said, he didn't have anyone to talk to. God said he was going to make Adam a companion and that it would be a woman. He said, the pretty lady will gather food for you. She will cook for you. And when you discover clothing, she will wash it for you. She will always agree with every decision you make. She will not nag you. She will, not, she will always be the first to admit she was wrong when you've had a disagreement. She will praise you. She will bear your children, never ask you to get up in the middle of the night to take care of them. She'll never have a headache, will freely give you love and passion whenever you need it. Adam asked God, what will a woman like this cost? God replied, an arm and a leg. And Adam asked, what can I get for a rib? <laughs> and the rest is history, right? The rest is history. <laughs> is your picture on the walls of the Hell's post office, you know? I wonder about that, you know, because when you think of a post office, you send a picture of these most wanted people. Criminals, but I would like to think that we're the opposite of that. We are we would be most wanted by the devil because we are breaking down his kingdom, his dominion, his rule, destroying it by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I think this text this morning really shows us that. You know, the, the, and the thing we see here in verse that the devil knew exactly. Look at verse 15. One day, the evil spirit answered at 15. Jesus, I know, and I know about Paul. Well, who are you? That's a good question. The devil knows exactly who true believers in Jesus Christ are and who to watch out for. He still knows today who the true people of God are. So we're going to look at two traits that are to examine ourselves this morning to, to find out, do we get the attention of darkness? And we know if we get the attention of darkness, of course, our number one focus is the attention of God Almighty. But the devil hates the things of God Almighty. And if you're special on God's plan, you might get a little bit of a challenge. So I'm going to share with you an inside job and an outside job, if you will. And uh, so we'll look at this. And so here's two things to think about to ensure we're known by the devil and really powerfully used by God. The first is this. The devil will know you if you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus. All right? It's in the outline there. If you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul was doing great and extraordinary miracles, miracles by the power of Jesus' name. We just saw there that there was a cancer where people were cured of leprosy, people were cured of all kinds of diseases. 
mental disorders, uh, demon possession, <laughs> blindness. God was using this church in a powerful way. Paul believed in Jesus Christ. He knew the Lord. That's why he was effective. Part of the reason why he was effective. He got saved on that road to Damascus. He was persecuting Christians. He was putting them to death. He was saying, get rid of them. I'm a great Jewish man. And all of a sudden, on the way to Damascus, a great light shone before him. He was knocked to, his, to uh, the ground on his way to Damascus. And God said, who, who, Paul, why? Paul, Paul, why do you persecute me? And it was Jesus Christ himself who caught him on that road. Amen? Now we need to think about the day that we were born again. God grants us on that road to whatever way we were going. And he says, shines the light on us and says, you need to come to me. Amen? Isn't it great to have had that experience? Hallelujah. To know you're born again, to know that you die, when you die, you go to heaven, to know that whatever you go through, God is with you, he's here to help you. Amen? Matter of fact, James 2.19 says, uh, you, it's more than believing the simple facts about Jesus. It needs to be a transaction in your heart to be saved. And uh, James 2.19, you probably know you, and James, if you believe in one God, good. Even demons believe that and shudder. So Paul had a life-changing faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It meant something to him. Now we see the seven sons of Sceva doing great and extraordinary miracles in the power of Jesus' name. Look at what happened. We see here, verse 13. Uh, some Jews went around driving out evil spirits, trying to invoke the name of the Lord over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Notice they say, they don't say, in the name of Jesus, whom we believe in, whom Paul preaches in, you know? And God is so proud that he was even doing miracles through the name of Jesus for someone who's not even saved. Isn't that amazing? You know? And uh, it meant something to Paul, the name of Jesus. It meant nothing to the seven sons of Sceva. And if it meant something to those seven guys, they would have cast demons out like Paul did. Have you ever heard people say in Jesus' name, almost like a Christian type of abracadabra, you know? Abracadabra of Jesus' name, you know? They claim things in Jesus' name, but people don't get any better. They don't get healed. They're still rampant divorces. They're still miserable. You know? I think people don't get the idea of the in Jesus' name things. To the believer, this name of Jesus is the sweetest name they'll know. There's power in Jesus' name. Amen. There's majesty in His name. He's Amen. the name above all names. Acts 4, 12 says, Salvation is found in no other name that only by the name of Jesus must we be saved. Amen? It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. I went to church all of my life and, you know, didn't know the Lord until I was 22 years old. I went every week and I even went during, during the week and I had, it wasn't in my heart. I didn't know him. I knew about him, but I never gave my life to him. I was never, was never uh, born again in his name. Let me tell you, the name of Jesus from the lips of us believers means that mountains will bow down. The scriptures say that the seas will roar. He, marriages will be restored. Illnesses will be healed. Comfort will be for those who are hurting. Strength to the weak. Riches given to the poor. Fractured relationships become mended. Churches are grown. People are saved. Revival happens. Amen. The devil knows by name those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I was just kept thinking about song. That song, Cheers. You want to go where people go. People are all strange. You want to go where the devil knows your name. Right? I just kept Sure. I changed the word, yeah. I changed the word. Where everybody knows your name. I want to go where the devil knows my name. Amen? We want to be effective for God. We want to be a threat to the darkness. We want to serve Jesus wholeheartedly. Amen? And, uh, we want to be those type of people. You know, to be saved, what a tremendous thing. If I had a basketball in my hand, it's worth 20 bucks. But a basketball in a guy like Kobe Bryant is worth $100 million, right? The contrast of football in, hand, in my hands is like worth eight bucks, but Peyton Manning, whatever he makes, $120 million. Baseball in my hands, 30 bucks, Jeter, Derek Jeter, 40 million. The steering wheel is worth 25 bucks, but Jeff Gordon, 49 million, you know, a racing guy. And the uh, golf club is my 15 bucks, Tiger Woods, 30 million, who knows? A set of nails in my hands are worth 13 cents, but in the hands of Jesus Christ, you can't put a price on it. Right. Amen. Amen. The name of Jesus Christ on the lips of a person who does not believe is weak. The name of Jesus on the lips of a person who knows him is powerful. Yes. Amen. Amen. The second thing I want you to see, which is something really important, is this. Um, is the second point is the devil. So he'll know you if you believe in Jesus. But the devil will especially know you if you live in the name of Jesus Christ. All right? Now, the first point was the inside job. You need to come to a point where you ask Jesus Christ inside your life. The second point, I, put, I considered an outside job, 
where a personal relationship with Jesus Christ translated to a public lifestyle. Amen? And of course, the devil didn't always know Paul because at one time he was killing Christians. And, uh, you know, he was a zero threat to the devil. He wasn't a blip on hell's radar, really. But then his conversion, something greatly happened. He was never the same again. He was taken out of the lion's book of death and put into the lamb's book of life. 